All right, guys. First of all, I'd like to say thanks for clicking on this video. And uh, it's obvious that you have an interest in saddle hunting and getting started saddle hunting. Uh, I will tell you this, this is be my third season of saddle hunting for me. So I've been through basically two seasons. I'm still a, consider myself a novice. Uh, but there are some things that I can show you that would have helped me to have seen along the way and some of it I did see. But I just thought I'd put together a video explaining some of the very basics of uh, saddle hunting. It might save you a little trouble. It might shorten your learning curve on some things. But uh, if you're inter interested in that kind of stuff, if you would do me a favor and go and hit the subscribe button. Uh, you can follow along the season as it goes along, watch our hunts. Uh, but anyway, I hope you find this to be a, a help to you. First of all, we're going to start off with the saddle. This right here is the Cruiser XC is what it is. And you hear one panel, two panel. Well, this is your panels. Some models have two smaller panels, one up high and one for low. This is a one panel pleated. It expands. It gets bigger while it's on you. But uh, that would be the panel. These are just saddle bags. This is to keep gear and ropes in, which we'll go over in a minute. I know for me, a lot of times you hear the tether, the lineman's belt, and the bridge. It seems like all kinds of rope. There's all kinds of rope options for each one of those. Um, but sometimes that gets confusing in all the lingo when you're watching or you listening to somebody talk about it or you're reading on Saddle Hunter Forum you're, and you're new, you're like, I don't even know what he's talking about. So I'm going to try to break that down a little bit for you. Now, the first thing you need to do, which I see people <laughs> first time saddle hunting, they get this wrong. And there's different ways to do it. But what I like to do is step through your bridge. Bridge being the rope that ties on the front. I'll show you all that. Holding on to your belt. Then click it in. Then you wrap around. And grab your leg straps. Then you're in. Now then, the bridge. Most saddles have two sets of loops. One has a bridge that's usually permanently attached to, or not permanently, but it's tied on there, it stays on there. This is your bridge. This is what you're gonna hook up when you get in the tree. These loops are for your lineman's belt. For all you stand hunters that's got a uh, safety harness that has these lineman loops on it, you know what they're for. They're for the lineman, linesman's belt or lineman's rope or whatever. So anyway, I'm going to show you what I do when I go to the tree. Now, I've bought a new system, and I'm still working out my process for four Muddy Pro sticks and my Seeker platform. So I'm just going to break down what I've done for the last two seasons. I've been using a uh, DIY top of the stick platform. It just goes right on top of the stick. It just cuts down on what you have to carry to the woods. Uh, I'm still gonna use this some, I'm sure, on a quick hunt, but for long, all day hunts, I'm gonna enjoy having a bigger platform. But this is how I've hunted for the first two years. It's doable. I've done some very long sets just on top of this. And if you wanna see how I did that video, I have it, it's under a DIY saddle and platform for less than $100, part one. I explain how I made this. So if you wanna go back and watch that, Watch that. Now, I originally owned three of these uh, Hawk Helium full length, but I discovered a lot of times I couldn't get to the height that I wanted. And I looked for another just buy one uh, stick, and they basically would cost me about what three would. So I had this one laying around when I strapped them to my carrier, and, and that's another thing. There's all kind of backpacks and all kind of ways. You, you have to figure out what works for you and what you have to carry your gear in with. Now I'm here at the tree, I broke my four sticks apart and I'm getting ready to hunt. I'll show you how I carry everything up. I would have my backpack on my back at this time with all my camera gear, but I left all that at home. So first I start with the first stick. All right, I'm to the tree. I've got my first stick up. Now, what I've done is I take and attach me a couple little paracord, just any kind of rope that you can put you some kind of way to hook this to your molly loops. Now what I use to hook to my molly loops, and there's a world of things you see people selling them. Uh, 
But what I bought, I got on Amazon, and bought a dozen of these things for a couple bucks. They're just one inch webbing S clips. Uh, I think they're called web ending strap clips or something on there. But you just get on Amazon and look around, just put in Molly webbing clips, and you'll see something that looks similar to this. And I put those on my Molly loop. So when I get to the tree, I've got my first stick up. I've got these right here where I can reach them. I'm going to drop that rope. In there like that. Two sticks. My top stick with the platform. And I only put this, I only put the rope on two of them. Those two are always my top two. All right. And I will say this, they will clank together. You got to be kind of slow moving and careful with it. What I do before I, which you should put your lineman's belt on from the beginning, but I find it difficult to do it this. I always set my stick, second stick right there. And then I climb up. All right, now I've stepped up on my first stick. I reach into, I keep all my ropes in my left saddlebag. And I should have showed you this from the beginning. Let me step down. All right, I always girth hitch my lineman's belt, or yeah, my lineman's rope to my lineman's loop. And I keep it in this saddlebag. Okay. okay, once I'm up here, I reach into this saddlebag and I run it around and I hook into my other lineman's loop. All right, guys, this is my lineman's belt. As you've seen, I put it on after I step on my first stick. This is a mechanical prussic or an ascender that you hear people talk about. This one happens to be a Rope Man 1. They make a Rope Man 1. There's a Rope Man 2 for smaller diameter ropes. This is an 11 millimeter rope. And all of them have a rating. This one says 10 to 13 millimeter range. You always want to stay within that spec. I think there's a CT rolling lock, a Kong duck. All of them have different sizes. Uh, I would say this. If you're making an investment and you know this is something you want to do, I would buy the 8 millimeter Oflux rope the first time because you're going to eventually want it because it just wads up easier than this rope here and it takes up less room in your saddlebag. That's one thing I didn't know from the beginning. This is a Rope Man 1 and I've already invested in, invested in two of these at $40 a piece. So I'm going to stick with these for a while longer until I wear something out before I make the switch. Uh, you can use a Prusik knot. You know those knots that come with your... Uh, you got a muddy harness that comes with the rope tree tether that you tether yourself. That little sliding knot on it is the Prusik knot. Uh, they make a little figure eight thing to help move them up and down with the rope. But the beauty of these is you just pull it. You tighten it up. You want to loosen it? You grab that thing right there and you can loosen yourself up from the tree. All right, the beauty of a mechanical device like this is if you want to get tight, if you've got a prussic, you've got to slide this thing up to tighten up. With these, you just lean into the tree, pull your rope, now you're tighter. One hand, you want to loosen it, there's a little thing right there, you just push it up, and lean away, and you can lean and tighten. Some people don't like these things, they like the safety of the prussic, but I haven't had an issue with it, and for me, it's for safety, I prefer this because I can do it one, I ain't constantly fighting the Prusik. I started off without that, and it didn't take but a trip or two up the tree that I realized, got to get some of these. So, uh, I've got one on my lineman's belt right here, and I've also got one on my tree tether that I hook into my bridge, which I'll show you that in a minute. Now then, I'm sitting here hands free. I then take this stick off of that one, try not to bump it. And I go to my second step on my stick. Then what I like to do is, and these are just standard buckles. A lot of people change you here, rope mods, daisy chains, and those are all fine, but I'm not that complicated. I just use the standard straps. Everybody says they're noisy, but once you learn your system to Keep them off metal to metal, you're fine. You can do them quietly. I'll then put my second one on. And 
And you got to keep in mind you want to space this bottom step about as high as you can step. And then I would proceed on up the tree. Okay, I'm on top of my second stick now. I'm going to reach around here and grab this rope. Pull it out. Same thing. And I'll go over how I do this so they don't make racket. Because everybody gets rid of the standard straps, but these things were designed to be used with these straps. I'm not knocking anybody that modifies their stuff, but this is going to be the safest way for a beginner. It's the simplest. It's a standard cinch strap. Everybody's used them. So, but I'll go over that in just a minute and show you how I try to eliminate noise with them. Again, basically the same thing. What I do is like tighten my belt up, my lineman's belt, lean my body against it, come around, get this strap right about chin level. For me, is where I find it's the best. Cinch it down. Pull it down. Step on up. Working your lineman's belt up. And proceed on up the tree to the next stick. Okay, let's say I'm standing on my third stick now. I covered that. Now I'm going to reach around here to my last stick that has the platform on it. Again, I just pulled that little piece of paracord right out of that hook, pulled it out. Now I'm gonna hold this buckle and release it while I keep this buckle in my hand so it doesn't hit anything. Then I drop that strap out, place it again about chin height. Wrap it around. Cinch it down. Now I will say this, on a full length stick with a platform on it, I found that I like to have oh, something else I should cover too. When I got to the base of the tree, I would have pulled out my drop, my pull up rope. I would have went on and hooked that to my bow before I ever started to climb. This would be hanging. Probably should have covered that. Let's just say this is hanging down there. When I get here, because if you're using a platform on top of the stick, if you're pushing this way, it can cause this thing to do that. And you don't want that when you're up there. So, always give it a good seat. Get it seated good. And I just use a standard cinch strap, just a cheap one, just something to tie the bottom of the stick in with. And if you do that, you'll never have an issue with kick out on this last stick. I only do it on the last stick because it has that platform on it and you're putting a whole lot more load and side pressure on it. I will add this, when you're putting this strap on the bottom, be sure you've got your lineman's belt up above it. That way you don't mess up and catch your lineman's belt with this strap. I'm going to hook that in, cinch it down, and then I don't have to worry about all the kick out. So now I'm going to work on up to the tree and show you how I tether in and get set up for hunting. I'm fixing to enter my platform and what I like to do next is I've got just a they, people make all kinds of different stuff for bow hangers and gear hangers because I film I've always got to put a camera arm on so I've got to now take my backpack off to get my camera gear set up before I actually get in here because I like to set my camera base at about this height and once I'm up in a tree it's very hard to put that base on so now I've got to take my backpack off my back and what I typically do is I'll take whatever gear hanger you got this is just a HME uh, I have to look at it look it up and see exactly what it is it's HME brand it's like eight bucks on Amazon uh, you can spend 40 bucks on one but you're gonna get basically the same thing and just lose some money so we're going to put your bow hanger in. 
and I like to set it from, I'm standing on the middle step for this top one. I like to get it up the tree as high as I can because it gets away from my camera equipment there. Run that through there. And if you're a DIY guy, you can find things to make this stuff out of and figure out your own system. That's part of the fun of saddle hunting. But you could wrap these hooks all the way around the tree. But let's just say I did that already. I hang my backpack up here and then I install my camera base. Once that's done, I then step up on the platform. Now then I like to take this lineman's rope and pull it in good and tight. I'm gonna reach back over here in this left saddle bag and I get my tree tether out. Now that's the one that's gonna be right here. That's the one I'm gonna attach to my bridge. <clears throat> but still, I'm safely attached to the tree right here. I'm not going anywhere. And with the lineman's belt always attached, you got two hands to work. Now your tether height depends on your comfort. But one thing that don't depend on comfort is where this comes through the loop. You want this lined up with you. Okay, now I've got that in the tree. Now I'm gonna pull my bridge back out. The one that was tied to my bridge loops. And I'm gonna hook in, set this down. Now hook in and tighten that up. I've now hooked my tether, the tether being this thing around the tree, this is my lineman's belt, and my bridge rope is the one that was permanently attached to my saddle. I now take this carabiner and I hook into it. Now I'm gonna tighten this one up. This one's got some tension on it. It's not super tight. Now I'm gonna slowly release the tension on my lineman's belt. Work it out, work it out. Be sure everything bites the tree good. Now then, I'm in the tree. Everybody does something different with their tag ends. I usually just figure eight it around my bridge to keep it from dangling. Figure out some kind of way that works for you. And once you're into it, everything's weight tested. You still got your lineman's belt on. But now I know I'm good. My pack's hanging here. My, I'm ready to pull my bow up. I then pull my bow up and uh, get it hanging, get an arrow knocked put my camera arm into my base and set my camera up from here. Then all I do is take this lineman's belt off and back in my left saddle pack, saddle pack bag, saddle bag, whatever you want to call it. I'm ready to hunt. This really takes no time once you get the hang of it. Every time you go up the tree, you'll find something different. Your tether height, me personally, I like to have a long tether. So a lot of times I'll let mine out to where when I sit down, I like my feet to just barely hit that platform. And I sit here like this, I can sit here for hours on end and not move. But some people just lean, they'll find that it's more comfortable this way with a little bit pull of this prussic or your mechanical prussic up and you stand here, pick your bow up. You can come around the tree shoot i mean you can shoot all the way around a tree out of one of these things that's the beauty of it it doesn't weigh a whole lot you just got sticks and a little platform or you got a top of the platform stick like myself now i'm gonna go over how do you get out of the tree of course i would pull this back up after i pulled my bow up i just tucked it back in my saddle pouch so now i'm getting out of the tree i will hook my bow up First thing I do is I unknock my arrow and let my bow down. It's down at ground level. I then will take my backpack, pack all my camera stuff up and put it back on my back. Everything's on my back. Then I take my gear hanger, I wrap it up. And for me, it all goes in my right pouch 
I'm taking all my items out of the tree. I've let my bow down. I've got my backpack on my shoulders. I take my gear hanger back down, stuff it back in my right saddle bag. My bow's on the ground. I'm now going to come in here and I'm going to tighten this back up as high as I can get it. And I kind of lean against the tree. I get my lineman's belt right back out. And I hook back up to these lineman's loops. Now then I'm going to pull that tight, standing on my platform. Now I've released all tension off of this. I'm going to slide it down. I'm going to unhook from my bridge the tethers and the carabiner. I'm going to unhook that. Undo my knot I had around my bridge. Now I'm going to take this off the tree. Goes back in my left saddle bag. All right, now it's time to start working down the tree. Now I've got it super tight. My lineman's belt super tight. You're going to have to have a little bit of relief so you can cover your step. So you're going to come down, work your way down the tree, no different than any other way with a lineman's belt. Now I'm on my next to top stick. I'm off of my top stick. I need a little bit more lineman's belt out. On a full length stick, I like to step down to my middle step. On these hawk heliums, I go and fold my legs up. I'll take this strap back off. All right, I took, took the bottom strap off this stick, fold it up, it goes in my right pouch. This is just how I do it, don't mean it's right, this is just my system. Now then, same way we came up, same way we're gonna come down. Now we're gonna release this one. Okay, and everybody complains about these metal buckles making sound. Keep your hand around that, okay? Unhook off this Versa button, and you might have to put your body into it to hold it there. Now you've got the stick off. All right, you got this buckle. Just took it off the tree. It makes all kinds of racket. What I like to do is hold this buckle still. Keep it in your hand. Take the sin that has the loop on it that goes on the Versa button. Always hold that. Always hold your uh, metal part there. Run that over that loop. And then work it around. Pulling it tight on the one side. And then pull the slack out with this one. Now you've got it good and tight, wrapped around your standoff and both of those. I then take what's left and I wrap it around here twice. And then I run it through here. And I cinch it down tight. Now that holds this from being able to move. It makes absolutely no noise. You will get no noise out of it. Then it's just your simple paracord, put it in your finger, reach around, find your clip again, and drop it in. And like I said, I've got six inches of paracord and a, a clip I got off of Amazon that literally I think that I caught, paid three dollars for a dozen of them. So, and they're cheap and they will break, but you get a dozen of them. So, you, I mean, I broke two in a season, so it's going to last me a while. Now you can buy. $10 items to do it. it might probably be easier to hook to but I mean I'm just a simple person I found those on Amazon and they work great for me so anyway you would just continue down the tree just as I come off that top stick you go all the way down when I get standing on my middle step of my bottom stick my second stick would be sitting right here and remember when I come up I laid it on top of the top stick when I come down I don't like to do it because I got this lineman's belt all the way to the ground and I'm afraid I'll hit it I usually just unhook it and hold it by the strap and then just lean it up against the tree and let it sit there while I come on down to the last one.
Now then, I'm down to the ground. I'm gonna unhook that, swing it around so it doesn't hit nothing. Goes right back in my left saddle bag where I keep my tree tether. Then I'll bend down and unhook my bow. And a lot of people use a gear hoist. That's just, a, to me, it's a big noisy thing. For me, the way I found to keep your rope from getting all knotted up, lay it in your hand. Lay it in your hand. The loop goes opposite each way. There's a loop at the bottom. There's a loop at the top. Loop at the bottom. Loop at the top. Loop at the bottom. Loop at the top. All the way until you get about a foot left. Then what I like to do is just fold it over, take my tag in, wrap, wrap up what's left, and when you get done, you just drop it and all of it comes right back out. Stick it right back in my saddle bag. When you pull it out, you unwrap it and drop it. It won't have a tangle in it nowhere. Now everything's back in my saddle bag. I'll cinch that one up. I'll cinch this one up. I'm ready to pack up my gear and get out of the woods. I mean, that's just how simple it is for me. I still haven't worked out what all I'm gonna have to do. I'm thinking when I get to my last stick, and you probably have the same issue, your platform's gonna be attached to your backpack. So you're probably gonna have to do like I do and go and have a gear hanger in your saddlebag to hang it up, hang your backpack up, so then take your platform off and set your platform. But anyway, I hope this helps you. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to me. I got a, a Facebook page, uh, Dixieland Bow Hunter. If you would go check that out, uh, you can reach me there, send me a message, or you can look me up on Facebook at Bow Hunter K Y. Uh, that's B O W H U N T E R K Y. All bow and then Hunter K Y is all one word. Uh, send me a friend request so you can message me, and I'll be glad to, to help you in any way that I can. And if you would, I just appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button if this has been a help. And uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you for watching.